They were the greatest of all horses, strong, intelligent, and wild. It was said they would bear no men save for the kings and princes of the Rohirrim. And while their most famous member would play a great role in the War of the Ring, his ancestry traced back to the very horses of the Valar. Today on Nerd of the Rings, we cover Shadowfax and the Meras. Like the great oxen of the east, the kind of Aura, the Meras trace their origin to one of the Valar, Orome the Huntsman. While most tales of ancient days in Middle-earth focus on the elves and the Edain of Beleriand, they were certainly not the only peoples familiar with the Valar. Indeed, the Northmen, who lived in the north of Rovanion, had their own name for Orome, Bema, inspired by the Old English word meaning trumpet. Also known to the Northmen was Orome's great steed, Nahar. These Northmen, the ancestors of the Rohirrim, had a great love of horses, and the tale would be passed through the years of how Bema himself brought out of the West the sire of their great horses, the Meras. For thousands of years, we have no information about the Meras, whether they encountered the Northmen or simply ran wild. It would not be until 2501 of the Third Age that we would find the tale of the first domesticated Meras. The lord of the Eothed at this time is Laod, a tamer of wild horses. Earlier, he had captured a white foal, which had now grown to be a great horse, strong, fair, and proud. No man could tame it. When Laod himself dared to mount the horse, it took off and at last threw him. The Lord struck his head on a rock and was killed. Laod's son was only 16 years old when he becomes Lord of their people and vows to avenge his father. Long he hunts for the horse, and upon finally catching sight of him, his companions expect him to come within bowshot and kill it. Instead, Aorl the Young stands up and calls in a loud voice, Come hither, Mansbane, and get a new name. To their wonder, the horse looked toward Aorl and came and stood before him. And Aorl said, Felleroth, I name you. You loved your freedom, and I do not blame you for that. But now you owe me a great wear guild, and you shall surrender your freedom to me until your life's end. Then Aorl mounted him, and Felleroff submitted, and Aorl rode him home without bit or brittle, and he rode him in like fashion ever after. The horse understood all that men said, though he would allow no man but Aorl to mount him. And it was upon Felleroff that Aorl rode to the field of Celebrant, for that horse proved as long-lived as men, and so were his descendants. These were the Meras, who would bear no one but the king of the Mark or his sons, until the time of Shadowfax. Indeed, Aorl and Felleroff would ride to save Gondor from attack, and found the realm of Rohan to the north of their great ally. In the end, Aorl and Felleroff, whose lives were brought together by tragedy, would die together in battle, defending the Wold from Easterling attack in 2545. Aorl is buried in the first royal mound of Rohan, and Felleroff is buried with him. Centuries later, there would be another great white horse believed to be one of the Meras, descended from the horse of Orome, that of course being Snowmane, the horse of King Theoden. We'll talk about Snowmane more in a bit, but as for the most famous of the Meras, Shadowfax, despite so many iconic depictions of him as a white horse, he is actually described as a silvery gray in the books. Shadowfax first enters the story of Middle-earth in September 3018, after Gandalf has escaped his imprisonment upon Orthanc with the help of Gwaihir. After Gandalf is taken by the Great Eagle to Rohan, Theoden, who is under the influence of Grima's words and poison, bids Gandalf to take any horse and be gone. On September 21st, Gandalf meets Shadowfax, but the horse will not allow him to come near. He follows the horse far over the fields, overtaking him on September 22nd, where he would finally tame the great horse. He would later recount the marvel of his steed. I took the best horse in the land, and I have never seen the like of him. The horses of the Nine cannot vie with him. 
tireless, swift as the flowing wind. Shadowfax, they called him. By day, his coat glistens like silver, and by night it is like a shade, and he passes unseen. Light is his footfall. Never before had any man mounted him, but I took him and tamed him, and so speedily he bore me that I reached the Shire when Frodo was on the Barrow Downs. Though I set out from Rohan, only when he set out from Hobbiton. Shadowfax would bear Gandalf away from Rohan at incredible speed, arriving in the Shire in just six days, coming to the gaffer's home on September 29th. The following day, Shadowfax bears Gandalf to Crick Hollow, where the wizard finds Frodo's cloak. Beginning to lose hope, Gandalf and Shadowfax make their way to Bree that night, where the wizard would converse with Barlaman Butterbur, who tells him about the hobbits leaving with Strider. Three days later, Gandalf arrives at Weathertop ahead of Aragorn and the Hobbits, who are also en route to Amon Sul. That night, Gandalf is attacked by Black Riders. He marks a stone left for Aragorn to interpret and escapes, leading away four riders who are in pursuit. Gandalf would take a long and difficult route, avoiding the main road to Rivendell in hopes of distracting the Nazgul from the Ringbearer's likely path. He would travel north of the Trollshaws and finally come to Rivendell from the north, arriving on October 18th, 15 days after being attacked on Weathertop. Upon reaching Rivendell safely, Gandalf turns Shadowfax loose, free to return to Rohan. We would later learn from Eomer that Shadowfax would finally arrive in Edoras the night of February 22nd, 3019, five months after leaving with Gandalf. Eomer also informs the three hunters that King Theoden's anger has not lessened over the situation. Not only was it an insult that Gandalf chose the greatest horse in the land, but Shadowfax is now described as wild, and we are told he will let no man handle him. On March 1st, a couple days after speaking with Eomer, Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli would meet a resurrected Gandalf the White. As they leave Fangorn Forest, Legolas sees a new horse running with their borrowed steeds, Hasufel and Arod, who recognize him as their chieftain. Legolas marvels at this great horse, saying, I have not seen his like before. Nor will you again, said Gandalf. That is Shadowfax. He is the chief of the Meras, lords of horses, and not even Theoden, king of Rohan, has ever looked on a better. Does he not shine like silver and run as smoothly as a swift stream? He has come for me, the horse of the White Rider. We are going to battle together. Even as the old wizard spoke, the great horse came striding up the slope towards them. His coat was glistening and his mane flowing in the wind of his speed. The two others followed, now far behind. As soon as Shadowfax saw Gandalf, he checked his pace and whinnied loudly. Then trotting gently forward, he stooped his proud head and nuzzled his great nostrils against the old man's neck. Gandalf caressed him. It is a long way from Rivendell, my friend, he said, but you are wise and swift and come at need. Far let us ride now together, and part not in this world again. Shadowfax would bear Gandalf to Edoras, where he would heal Theoden. Along the way, we are told Shadowfax leads the other horses, navigating many hidden pools, treacherous bogs, and broad acres of land without faltering, for he knows the way through every fen and hollow. After freeing the king, Gandalf approaches Eomer and the three hunters outside. Where is Shatterfax? said Gandalf. Running wild over the grass, they answered. He will let no man handle him. Gandalf whistled and called aloud the horse's name, and far away he tossed his head and neighed, and turning sped toward the host like an arrow. Were the breath of the west wind to take a body visible, even so would it appear, said Eomer as the great horse ran up, until he stood before the wizard. The gift seems already to be given, said Theoden. But hearken all, here now I name my guest, Gandalf Graham, wisest of counselors, most welcome of wanderers, a lord of the Mark, a chieftain of the Eolingas, while our kin shall last. And I give to him Shadowfax, prince of horses. When Gandalf and Pippin ride from Edoras to Minas Tirith, nearly without stopping, Pippin remarks at the speed and light footfalls of Shadowfax, 
Indeed, his speed rivals that of the winged beasts of the Nazgul. Gandalf reveals that Shadowfax will have no harness, and that one does not ride him. He is either willing to carry you or not. And if he is willing, it is his business to see that you remain on his back, unless you purposely jump off. After they arrive in Gondor, Baragond remarks how strong and proud Shadowfax is, while he and Pippin are in the stables, saying the horse seems like he is spoiling for a race rather than coming from a great journey. While Shadowfax would bear Gandalf throughout the War of the Ring, Theoden would also ride one of the Meras into battle. It is believed that Snowmane, being the king's steed, was also one of this line of great horses. Both horses would come to Gondor during the Battle of the Pelennor Fields, and both steeds would come into contact with the most terrible of the servants of the enemy, the Witch King of Angmar. The first would come when Grond breaks the gate of Minas Tirith. In rode the Lord of the Nazgul, a great black shape against the fires beyond he loomed up, grown to a vast menace of despair. In rode the Lord of the Nazgul, under the archway that no enemy ever yet had passed, and all fled before his face, all save one. There waiting, silent and still in the space before the gate, sat Gandalf upon Shadowfax. Shadowfax, who alone among the free horses of the earth endured the terror, unmoving, steadfast as a graven image in Rathdinan. Gandalf and the Witch King would have their standoff interrupted by the horns of Rohan coming with the dawn. Snowmane would next encounter the dreadful foe, showing that only Shadowfax, the very greatest of their kind, could withstand the terror he brought. At the coming of the Witch King, Snowmane stands upon his hind legs in terror. The Witch King then pierces the great horse with a black dart, causing him to fall back, landing upon his rider. After the battle, the men would bury Snowmane where he fell, and upon a stone was carved the words, Faithful servant, yet master's bane, Lightfoot's foal, swift Snowmane. This burial mound would ever after be known as Snowmane's How, and green and long grass would grow upon it. Nearby, where they burned the beast of the Witch King, the ground was ever black and bare. As for Shadowfax, he would indeed bear Gandalf to the very end of his time in Middle-earth, returning to Rivendell, accompanying the hobbits to Bree, visiting Tom Bombadil, and finally, two and a half years after the destruction of the One Ring, taking his rider to the Grey Havens, as Frodo would observe. Then Círdan led them to the Havens, and there was a white ship lying, and upon the quay beside a great grey horse stood a figure robed all in white, awaiting them. It is believed that Shadowfax would make the trip to the Undying Lands with Gandalf, sailing west as the greatest of the descendants of Nahar, and the most memorable of all the Meras. As always, I want to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters who make this channel possible. Tom de Bombadil 19, Listen Me the Cinda, Kella Brimbor, The Mighty Mim, Team Weasel, Rabbi Rob Thomas, Charles Leisure, Toby Mobs Music, CCDC Red Team, Nerd Sigman Anytimer, Pelkey Sports Cards, Moki the Brown, Christopher Carbaugh, Joe Tepper, Sky Carcass, Slide Belts, Dane Ragnarsson, Salim Rahman, Zetrock, Bertelberg, Grand Strategy Nerd, Graham Derricott, The Dark Haired One, Wyland, Michael Wu, Grant McGregor, and Debbie. If you enjoyed the artwork in this video, check out the artists in the description and purchase prints of their great work for yourself. Thanks so much for watching and subscribing, and we'll see you next time on Nerd of the Rings.